Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Rubber cement is a household name when it comes to adhesives, widely recognized for its versatility and ease of use. But when we think of brands like Rugby, we seldom consider the origins of this sticky marvel or the innovation behind it. The story of rubber cement's invention and the brand's rise is more than just a tale of chemistry. It's a glimpse into a history of ingenuity, industrial growth, and human necessity. Let's take a deep dive into who invented rubber cement, why it was developed, and how Rugby emerged as a dominant brand in the market. Rubber cement, as we know it today, was born from a marriage between the evolving chemistry of the 19th and early 20th centuries and the rise in demand for versatile adhesives. The invention of rubber cement is primarily attributed to the development of liquid adhesives in which natural rubber is the central component. Before the emergence of rubber cement, people relied on more rigid, less versatile adhesives like animal-based glues, which were often difficult to work with and limited in their application. The need for a quick-drying, flexible adhesive was apparent as the world moved toward industrialization and mass production. The process of creating rubber cement involves dissolving unvulcanized rubber in a solvent, typically hexane, to form a fluid that can be applied to surfaces. Upon application, the solvent evaporates, leaving behind a layer of sticky rubber that remains flexible even when dry. This innovation was particularly useful in the crafts, design, and industrial sectors. The adhesive properties of rubber cement made it ideal for projects that required repositioning, such as photo mounting, leatherwork, and model building. But who can we credit with this innovation? The origins of rubber cement trace back to the 19th century when the rubber industry was expanding. The use of natural rubber in adhesives was explored in various forms, and the development of rubber cement was a gradual process rather than a single breakthrough. Thomas Hancock and Charles Goodyear are often mentioned in the broader history of rubber products. While neither of them invented rubber cement specifically, their pioneering work in the vulcanization of rubber set the foundation for all subsequent rubber-based products, including adhesives. Hancock, an Englishman, was instrumental in discovering how to work raw rubber into a malleable material. Goodyear, an American, perfected the vulcanization process, stabilizing rubber and making it more suitable for widespread industrial applications. Although these innovations were primarily focused on the rubber industry for tires, belts, and seals, they paved the way for rubber cement. The actual formulation of rubber cement is credited to the chemical developments of early 20th century adhesives manufacturers. During this period, companies were exploring various adhesive solutions, blending different solvents and rubbers to create products tailored for specific needs. In the 1920s and 1930s, rubber cement began appearing as a commercial product. By this time, it was marketed primarily for household and industrial use. The branding of rubber cement, particularly under names like Rugby, reflects the rise of the product's popularity and the success of branding strategies during the post-war era. Rugby rubber cement in particular became a household name in the Philippines and other parts of Asia, where it remains a go-to adhesive for various purposes. Rugby is a brand of rubber cement manufactured by Bostic, a French company that has been a significant player in the adhesives and sealants industry since its founding in 1889. Bostic originally started as a producer of industrial adhesives and expanded its product line over the decades to include household adhesives, sealants, and construction products. Rugby became one of its most recognized brands in Southeast Asia, where it is commonly used for arts and crafts, household repairs, and even in industrial settings. 
The rugby brand's strong association with rubber cement in the Philippines and surrounding regions highlights an interesting aspect of product localization and brand attachment. For many Filipinos, the term rugby is synonymous with rubber cement, demonstrating how a brand can become deeply entrenched in the culture. However, rugby's widespread availability and low cost also led to unintended consequences, as it became notorious in some communities for misuse as an inhalant. This darker side of the product's history underscores the complexities of manufacturing and distributing such versatile consumer goods. The chemical composition of rugby and similar rubber cements has remained consistent over the years a mix of natural or synthetic rubber dissolved in a volatile solvent. The formula is designed for easy application, quick drying, and a balance between adhesion strength and flexibility. Rubber cement is unique compared to other adhesives because it allows for repositioning without tearing or damaging surfaces, making it ideal for delicate projects. When applied thinly, it can hold paper or light materials together while remaining tacky enough to allow adjustments. When applied more thickly, it offers stronger bonding suitable for heavier materials like leather or plastic. In the broader history of adhesives, rubber cement occupies an essential niche between traditional glues and modern synthetic adhesives. It offers a balance of convenience and effectiveness that remains unmatched for certain applications. While newer adhesives like cyanoacrylate, superglue, and epoxy have taken over in many sectors, rubber cement still holds its ground due to its specific properties. The invention and popularization of rubber cement showcase how even small innovations in materials science can have a lasting impact on everyday life and industry. As for who specifically invented rugby rubber cement, it is more accurate to view its development as a collective effort driven by advancements in rubber chemistry and industrial production rather than the brainchild of a single individual. The rugby brand's success is more closely tied to effective marketing, distribution, and its adoption in specific markets, especially in Southeast Asia. Over time, rugby has become a brand that not only represents a product, but also carries cultural significance due to its accessibility and various uses in the region. The story of rubber cement and the rugby brand is a reminder that even the most common products in our daily lives have rich histories that intertwine with technological progress, consumer culture, and even social challenges. From its early beginnings in rubber chemistry to becoming a staple in households and classrooms, Rubber cement continues to be a testament to human ingenuity and the drive to solve practical problems. Whether it's used to fix a torn book cover, assemble a model, or create art, rubber cement remains a versatile tool, with the rugby brand standing as a lasting symbol of that innovation. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.